Deep in the heart of Choctaw County, Mississippi in 1934, Roy Blackwood, his younger brothers Doyle and James, and Roy's son R.W. Blackwood Sr. formed the musical phenomenon that would become the most well-known and respected name in gospel music, the Blackwood Brothers. Why don't you swing down the street, Jerry, stop and move at me, right? Swing down, Jerry, stop and move at me, right? Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord, come and easy, I got a hold on me, hold the side, why don't you swing down the street? Through the years, members of the Blackwood Brothers have won eight Grammy Awards, 27 Dove Awards, and five All-American Music Awards. The Blackwood Brothers were the first artists to be inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame in Nashville. The Southern Gospel Music Museum inside the gates of Dollywood in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, recognizes the Blackwood family's significant impact on the music industry with an impressive display. James and R.W. Blackwood Sr. also hold places of honor in the Southern Gospel Music Hall of Fame in Pigeon Forge. In the moments to come, with the help of country music legend Charlie Daniels and many other Blackwood family friends, you will hear the remarkable story of how the hand of God planted a song in the hearts of a family of Mississippi sharecroppers. And that song took them to the top of the music world. I'm Shelley Lane Blackwood. Ron, R.W., Donna, and I want to sincerely thank you for joining us. It is our hope that you will be touched by the tragedy and inspired by the triumph of the Blackwoods. Swing low. First formed in 1934, the Blackwood Brothers made a reputation for themselves on the radio during the 40s. The lineup eventually settled around bass singer Bill Lyles and James and R.W. Blackwood. James Blackwood was about your best second time to lead. R.W. Blackwood at that time had a fantastic baritone voice, and Bill Lyles, the bass, just as smooth as you could be. That's why I joined them, to be in there with all those good voices. I wouldn't want them if it had been any other way. After tenor singer Bill Shaw joined in 1952, the first classic lineup of the Blackwood Brothers was complete. Here's a song we have many requests for. It's entitled, I'll Tell It Wherever I Go. A song for you by the Blackwood Brothers Quartet, featuring Bill Shaw, our high tenor singer on the solo part, and Bill Lyles doing the bass fiddle part. Bill Shaw was a tremendously high tenor singer. And what made them so good at that time was their high-ranged harmony. And if I were dying with just one word to say, I'd speak for Jesus. Then The Blackwood Brothers' unique harmonies meant that they became the first real stars of white gospel. They won a prestigious TV talent show and played to packed auditoriums around the South. For those at the top, traveling was easier. The Blackwood Brothers flew to their concerts in a private aircraft, which the group piloted themselves. But on the evening of June 30th, 1954, tragedy struck. It was in Clanton, Alabama. They were to do a concert there that night, and the promoter's son wanted to ride in their twin-engine beach craft. And so R.W. Blackwood, the pilot, decided that he and Bill Lyles, the bass singer, would take the promoter's son up for a little joyride before the concert. 
they were going to take off, and it was unlit. And this was about dusk. Took off, went out. Instead of going out the usual way, it went out by like that, and then all of a sudden, it just went up, just got in that position. They couldn't pull out of it, so it stalled, fell to the ground, and crashed. It burst into flames, you know, and then the, they were all killed. We never did fly anymore. When you tears in your eyes, your Huge funeral in Memphis. A very young Elvis Presley in 1954 attended the funeral. Later, it was told, he sat with his girlfriend, Dixie Locke, and cried. It was, it was absolutely devastating to anyone who loved Southern gospel music. When Daddy died in the plane crash, um, I was 13 years old. I took it pretty heavy because he was my hero. They came over the new service, and uh, you, you know we, we just and, and we had just seen uh, our baby and Bill, uh, maybe not more than a month before that. I truly was heartbroken because I just there was nobody like R. W. Blackwood. There is no night for in his life you never. The Blackwood Brothers Quartet was reborn with J.D. Sumner singing bass and James Nephew Cecil Blackwood on baritone. Their first concert together was scheduled for Clanton, Alabama, the site of the plane crash. And this was about a, a month and a half after the plane crash. And right back to the airport hangar, we did a concert without even rehearsal. Bill Shaw, James Blackwood, Cecil Blackwood, J.D. Sumner, Jackie Marshall to the piano and that started our career back up there at the airport with several thousand people there to hear us. And Elaine Blackwood, R.W.'s widow, Ruth Lyles, Bill Lyles' widow, they were there and the kids, we introduced them. But I remember being there, I remember them introducing Cecil, but I think the one that got me the most was J.D. Sumner. All I know is I saw a guy just stand up, looked like he, looked like he went all the way to the top of the mountain as big as he was. J.D. Sumner built a bridge that night to R.W.'s son, Ron, establishing a loving bond that would last for the rest of his life. He said, nobody could take your daddy's place. He said, I'm here to help. 